but I was fucking him in the ass and when he's getting ready to come he's like oh he put it right there he's like put it by my dick and so he sprayed yeah. the cum yep. into the Dixie cup and then he swallowed it and yeah! he's like feed it to me and I just went and like feed it to him he was like ah! like just like I know it <laughs> I love you I love you I love you I love you I love you, I love you like la 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 oh. welcome to today's episode of Inside Only Fans oh, we're filming we are filming. Shit. I am Kayla. I'm here with Shejer. Shejay. Shejay Spark. Shejay Spark. My birthday is coming up very soon. Very soon. And you don't look a day over 30. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. I I'm appreciate serious. your lies to my face. You you don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't act a day over 30, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. That is correct. Yeah. Yep, that's right. I try very hard to take on as little responsibility as possible. I in sometimes my life. wish <laughs> there are days that I really wish I would have taken a page out of your book. Yeah. When I feel very overwhelmed with my life, my independence, I, I think, fuck, what have I done to myself? I know independent woman. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to be. Yeah, it's too. That's a lot of responsibility. That independent title. I know. But then you know, if you're if you're dependent as a lady, sometimes people let you down too. You people know? let you down when you're independent too. <laughs> let me tell you, it doesn't matter. They don't discriminate. Shit, shit. You just people are letting you down, and you still also have to pay your bills. <laughs> Oh, damn it. Because you can't let your mortgage down or your credit is also down. Yeah. And then, you know. I don't know what it is. Like, rent every month is like my period every month. I'm just shocked. I'm like shocked. When it like happens. Like, what is this? I'm genuinely shocked every single time. I'm like, who? What? Yeah. I got a bill. They e- they'll they email me like just like a reminder or whatever. And I'm like, fuck. The like, audacity. Ev- every month I'm like, God, what day is it? I know. I'm like, this month's the beginning of another month already. Where did the time go? Dude, every time I get an email reminder of a payment, I don't even like I forgot I had that payment. You're like, I'm I like, just I forgot. paid this. You're, like, they're like, yeah, it's been 30 days, ma'am. You're like all like, my what? storage, something storage. I forgot that I have because... In L.A., the places are not made for, like, you know, you don't have much closet space for yeah. your things. Smaller, yeah. yeah. So I have a storage unit. It's not huge, but I have it for just things that are that I don't want to throw away. Sex toys. Huge dildos. I got huge. one of those Romy Rain torso dildos. Yeah. I got ten of them. That's a good one. Ten? Imagine you open. All types of colors. <laughs> you don't discriminate. There's, like, one little, like, tiny man, Wait, one imagine, big man. Imagine on Storage Wars where they go and bid and somebody bids a bunch of money and it's just a bunch of torso dildos. God, can you imagine? I feel like it'd fetch a good price. Like, on, I feel like that they would be... Somewhat disturbed, but also excited. Like this is gonna give us a get us a pretty penny. I feel like they'd be a worthy investment, if but you will. How are we doing used torso dildos? Like, where is the market? Wait a minute. So you're fucking all these torso dildos? I just yeah. thought they were in storage. No, it's like they run a train on you, but because they're not alive, you have to do the train on them. So like every time you have sex with one, you're like a you're almost like a man in that. You're like throw it away. <laughs> Yeah. On to the next. Mm-hmm. Brand new every time I would like to. I need a new a new torso pain. And then when you're feeling like nostalgic, mm. you go back to your tried and true yes. girls. Yes. Boys. Um, okay, so they'd be used. So That's what a I'm used saying. torso probably wouldn't go for as much as a brand new, you know. But you can make shoes out of them, like Rose and Good Babe. That's right. You could recycle them and save the and save the planet. And oh, make yeah. um, more breast implants and ass implants for for me and for any of our other guests that would like to come in. We can just start giving them as gifts. You get a t- dildo torso. Yeah. That can also be re- recycled and reused into an implant of some sort. I think we're on to a new Honestly, venture here. I think we're fucking like solving global warming and the implant shortage situation. <laughs> If there in ever Beverly was Hills. one. <laughs> <laughs> it would be in Beverly Hills for sure. Maybe Scottsdale is like a, sec- a close second or Vegas. But yeah, for sure. That's, I swear. That's to- God's work. That is, it's, it's actually the opposite. 
<laughs> it's actually you would know a little bit about God's work. You were just in God's country. In where? Where? Galt. In Oh. Is that where you were? Oh, I wasn't. Uh, that's so beautiful. I never have heard you. I, I think you're calling me an Amish person. <laughs> you know, you're a little Amish. There is a few ma- men named Jebediah up in the... Uh, Galt area. Let me if tell you, you will. plowing C- the cornfields. She attended a nice wedding. I surely with did. With nice, modest folk. I sure did. And sh- I have never seen CJ so covered up in my life. I wore what is pretty much known in LA as a burqa. You were wearing a schmock. <laughs> I was wearing a full. I, it was from neck. It covered. It covered your whole and my shoulders. Yes, chest. Shoulders. I didn't recognize you without the bazoombas. I know. And the bazoombas, it was, it. I have to say this is so funny. Obviously, these people don't listen to my show, so I feel as though I can speak freely. There was one lady who um, was quite built. She had, um, she'd had a little work done in the way that I had on her chestular area. And um, she, she, I walked into a room and it was all women. So we were all kind of changing openly, not really worried about it. And she was putting on some uh, booby pads. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like the dress, like, (laughs) I'm like, they're, they're not going anywhere. We're strapped in. And she was like, she was like, well, you know, we're going to be, because my sister and the guy that she's married are very religious. So they were getting married in a church, a very serious church ceremony. And she goes, well, we're going to be up on stage, you know, under those bright lights. And those men might be Christians, but they're still looking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, my God. They're still, lo- they're still looking? I... Y'all Christians are at church still looking? They're extra looking. <laughs> Like, I was so disturbed because the thought had never crossed my mind. Dude. When and you, I thought, I guess it's true. We're standing up there on display. They're like, <laughs> when you were telling me, I called, or CJ called me, and I was asking her about yeah. this wedding because I knew it was going to be very religious. Just to interject really quick, my sister, 36 years old, and her husband, 34, are virgins, guys. So just to set the tone. Like there. virgins. and Chaperone dates. Like lived separately and not until they got married did they go home together yeah so i was just curious how this heathen if she burst into flames if she was feeling okay <laughs> but <was> she <laughs> she faced one of the questions that i face like i awkwardly face sometimes of like you know what do you, like what do you do or oh i heard you have a podcast oh, what's right. it about and i was like yeah what do you tell someone <laughs> it was that same bridesmaid oh it was yeah she's really cool like she's she had a life before she became a christian so she's very outspoken but i just felt like in that moment we had just finished a prayer circle for my sister <laughs> the beautiful blushing virginal bride i mean you know the 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 whitest dress ever and deserved every bit of it and then, and then she goes so cassandra which is my real name if y'all didn't know i heard you have a podcast i'd like to i'd like to listen in one day <laughs> i'm like oh my god he's like what's it about and you were saying yeah. it's about people who have alternative lifestyles yeah. <laughs> And she kept pressing, like, by like, what do you mean alternative? Yeah, yeah. I could feel you sweating through the phone. Yes, <laughs> I was sweating partially because listen, I fucking love Inside Only Fans. I love what we do. I love Kayla. I love. I don't know if y'all remember Pod Daddy. I love Max Maximini, who puts on the show, who um, Abstraction Media produces it. I love everyone here. And I will, I'll yell it from the rooftops. I don't give a fuck, y'all. I ride or die for this show. <laughs> However, on my sister's special <laughs> virginal day in the nursery area <laughs> of the church, so it's like the side off to the church where the purest of the pure babies are, <laughs> I'm like, I do not want to talk about <laughs> this. If there was one time in my life that I just know it ain't, a, this is not the proper time. <laughs> It is not while my my un, unplowed snow oh my of a sister is sitting right here <laughs> and talk. I need to go on about the inside only fan show. So I was really trying so oh my hard God. to still like answer her questions and seem somewhat forthcoming and not 
offend her maybe yeah and but also not say anything and you guys i was sitting there um just so i was like getting nauseous <laughs> i'm like <laughs> I'm like, whoa, it's it's really it's hot in here. Go, whoa, is there something? Somebody open up a window. What's going on? And yeah, she proceeded. She proceeded. And then one of the other bridesmaids interjected. I'm pretty Saved sure you. she figured out what was going on. She's like, we aren't going to talk about squirting here. <laughs> the only <laughs> thing we're squirting is holy water. Right. That's right. She was like, <laughs> and then I just have to say this too. I think, you know, Everybody, I think it's relatable. Everybody's family. Everybody feels a little different from their family. I think especially a lot of the people down here in L.A., we tend to feel a little bit, you know, that's why people move away because they go to find for, find people that they might feel more comfortable with or that they have a lot more in common with. But I have to just say this one last thing. It was the cutest thing. They drove off in the car. The wedding was short, y'all. Y'all think that we were partying all night long. No. No, 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 I didn't no. think that. They had, dated, they had dated for like six months, and they were out. That was It was like a couple-hour ceremony, um, an hour ceremony at the church, and then a couple-hour partying with the cookie bar afterwards. Everyone was encouraged to fill up a box of cookies and take them sugar cookies home. And then when the car drove off, it said just married on the top, big bold letters. And then in the bottom uh, underneath on the back window, you know, when the how they write on the cars when people just get married, it said excited to do biblical things. <laughs> <laughs> Rode off into the sunset. I love a nice sex joke. Yeah. And I have a biblical sex joke. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've not heard from my sister since. She hasn't stopped trying to figure out what hole it goes in. I know. No, I think they got like premarital counseling and stuff. They did it right. They did it right. So if we ever go rogue here on Inside Only Fans and decide to have the complete fucking opposite, <laughs> we'll be sure to invite them on and, uh, you know, get the uh, word of God up in this bitch. Amen. Yep. Amen. And the church said, Amen. Woo! Amen for our two hot guests over we here. We have two great guests. We have two. I love when we have two guests. I love when we have two, two. Two, two. Two, two. Two as well. That's right. Okay, so we have two very special guests today. We have Tasha Rain, adult film star and author. And we have Brittany Amber. She is also an adult film star and YouTuber. Let's bring them out. Bring them out. All right, so thank you guys for coming. Thanks for having us. I'm very thank excited. You. Let's get Let's into it. Let's dive right in. We have um, Tasha Rain, who is the gal who wrote a book from princess to porn star. Love that. Definitely want to dive into that more. And we have Brittany Amber, who formerly worked at the Bunny Ranch. That is right. Th that's what I did before I started shooting adult films. So Hell yeah! Yes. I definitely want to spotlight both of these topics. <clears throat> Why don't we go ahead and start with you, Brittany Amber, and just sure. give us the... Give us the lowdown on this. I was so <laughs> excited when you came in and you started sharing a little bit because yeah. I definitely watched that program. I forget what it was yeah, called. Yeah, Cat House on HBO. It was a big show. It, I, at the time when the show was very popular, I was working graveyard shift as an auditor. And so you had a normal uh, life before all this. Oh, uh, it was it was a horrible it was a horrible <laughs> life before. I mean, when you have to work graveyard shift, I don't know if you ever have had to mm -hmm. do that before. But I had to work late, not graveyard, but my body never got used to yeah. it, and I would do that for almost two years and. It was so hard just trying to drink energy drinks all through the night, taking energy pills, all this stuff. I'm like, ah. Yeah. And then because it was graveyard shift um, during the night, that's when all the adult shows would come on, the late night shows. And then that's when I started good watching stuff. Cat House. Yes, the good stuff. <laughs> and I became such a big fan of the show. It was really such a good show. So entertaining. So many funny characters and everything. And what drew I was you in like, at first, though? Because it's a show yeah. about escorts. It's about yeah, the yeah, about a legal brothel in northern Nevada. And so, yeah, I, I didn't even know that this was a thing. And I, that was the first thing that intrigued me. And then 
just, you know, seeing these girls' lives, all this money they were making, all this fun they were having. And, it looked and glamorous. They didn't have to be up from 11 to 7. <laughs> and, oh, my gosh, that was the most uh, attractive, appealing thing of you it all. You were like, I, I can like, sleep at night. Oh, God, it would be so nice to have that life. I was like, just, uh, I, I never <laughs> thought that it could ever happen for me, you know. I, mm-hmm. I, I was mm-hmm. just like, this is a dream. But I actually, because at the time, I got married very young. And okay. so you were married uh, while yeah. you were watching this yeah. and secretly kind of like, oh, man, I wish I could be this glamorous escort. Yes. I I mean, it just looked like a lot of fun. It looked like way more fun than I was having, I'll tell you that. (laughs) And so I I had reached out at the time. Everyone was on MySpace, and I reached out to the owner, Dennis Hoff, who— he was now dead, actually. Oh, uh, he yeah. Got too rest much in sex. peace. <laughs> oh, it was like it was a very weird way the way he died. I don't know if you heard about this weird conspiracy. He was actually running for governor of Nevada, and he ended up winning. But he died like three weeks before what? he won, and then it was during his birthday party. He ended up having like a weird heart attack or something during a, a birthday party of his. Ooh. So it was just really strange. All these weird what circumstances. Is conspiracy. Yeah. Well, just because he was about to win. Yeah. You but know, what is it? That somebody I, I, poisoned him or something? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It wow. was it was during a party, like a birthday. I mean, you know, it was he just was, he look fucked into it. It's weird. To I death, or maybe did a little cocaine. Uh, I don't know. He know. was older though. He was like in his seventies. That don't matter. We got seventy yeah. year old old maybe. men out of high doing, doing cocaine on a Tuesday. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how like <laughs> I mean, uh, the, I don't... Oh, the geriatrics, you know, party <laughs> like live there. I'm sure they do. To be fair, I don't know this. I don't know this man, so I'm just making a wild speculation. Yeah, but perhaps, However, yeah. No, I know it could be. It could be. Yeah, it was during a party, like crazy party and he stuff. He wouldn't be the first politician to know yeah. cocaine either. I know. I guess like Ron Jeremy was there and then uh, oh. Heidi Fleiss was there. Oh, no, was, that, was that the one that, Yeah, that was her name, right? The one that had the... The, the she, little black book, yeah. She, the, the brothel. The, she had the Mel brothel. Yeah. So he, she was a friend of his also. And so there was a lot of characters there too. It was just a really weird situation. Oh. The whole thing was just so... Such a weird if you have if you've never heard of it look it up it's it's pretty oh, crazy all, Sounds all interesting. of it so you said that you had reached out just oh hoping. sorry yeah i went off on like oh no, you're good <laughs> this whole thing is i was like that's crazy but um yeah so i had reached out to dennis and uh on myspace and i thought that there was probably no chance he would ever even see it or ever get back to me and he got back to me in two days with uh all this information a huge message and was like you can come out i'll pay for your flight no obligations you know if you don't like it you never have to come back and so it took my it took me some convincing like you know with my yeah, husband. Yeah, what was your and... husband sit? You're like, babe, <laughs> this man from the internet. Like, mind you, if I looked at Kayla right now and said a man from the internet is inviting me out, says going to pay for my flight. Nowadays, <laughs> Kayla's going to look at me and she's going to say, CJ, come, like, come on now. Mm-hmm. So even back then, this is the days of MySpace, y'all. This was like, I mean, fifteen. Mm-hmm. 10, 15 years ago. And yeah. I remember MySpace. I was on MySpace <laughs> living it up. I loved, I loved me some MySpace. Mm-hmm. So I was there too. But so th- there's a man on the internet. Yeah. He wants to fly you out. He's like, just come out here. And you're, you also have to ask your husband mm-hmm. that you had been married to. And yeah. So he, yeah, that took days of convincing. And so well, I, I was, wait, wait, wait. I want to know the conversation. Oh, yeah. Like, babe, yeah. I'm, I want to really go out and be. And have sex and get paid and be a glamorous escort. How do you sell that to your husband? Yeah, well, that, uh, not like that. Not like <laughs> I want to go have sex and everything. Okay. But like, I was just like, you know, I can make enough money to buy a house and stuff like that. Okay. And I was really like, I'm pushing for like a few days. And like I said, we got married young. So, I mean, even though I get, you know, we loved each other, it wasn't like, you know, we were young. You've been and married dumb, for a while. You know? So maybe he was like, eh. mm-hmm. yeah. At that point, we had been married about two years because we got married when I was okay. 18. And uh, we so had a daughter when I was 18 and everything wow. too so I was a whole nother aspect and everything too and I was just kind of going out on a limb you know and um but you know eventually he was just like okay you know let's see you know what happens but I ended up working there for about three and a half years and that's what led me into you know, shooting adult movies so did and you stuff. guys divorce um, we did eventually, yeah. And but, here's the thing is like, you know, even before, you know, um, reaching out to Dennis and all that, like I, I was already like, uh, you know, well, we, we, we got, we got, <laughs> you already uh, had the ick. 
<laughs> yeah, we got married. We got married young, and I knew I had made a mistake, and it was okay. just okay. because you know, like I said, we had a I, we had a daughter, and I felt like you know you get kind of get pressured into that, yeah, of like course. You, you know. So you that, grow that up was in a small town. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. you were raised a little bit religiously as well. You yeah. go and get married and do the right thing, and yeah, you're mm-hmm. so young at that point, you can't really see any way other than that. Yeah, so. yeah, you just you know yeah you just kind of go with what people kind of pressure you and tell you to do. My grandpa Frank was like, oh, you know, he's gonna have a baby with you and not marry you, and kind of got in my head and that was really what got in my head I wish she would never have said that because I would have never have been like oh did I? I was never even thinking that you know and, and okay. that was you know so don't listen to grandpa Frank y'all grandpa no. Frank comes telling you y'all better get married at 18 just shine them all yeah. keep it walking always think always go with what feels right for you not what other people are pressuring you to do even when you're young it's really hard to see past that you That's know fair but, yeah, so I was already kind of over, and I think he was too, you know. So I, it was whatever. It wasn't like I was missing out on this great relationship or anything. I had other aspects ahead of me, you know. So that's why kind of where I was going. So you got out, you flew out there, you you got to the ban- bunny ranch, and you were like, "Honey, I'm home." I'm ready to fuck. Or what was going on? <laughs> oh, man. Sign so I was young, you know. And uh, like I said, I had been married for two years. And, I, you know, I had been with a, a couple of few partners before that. But, you know, I wasn't, like, sexually experienced or anything like that. So I wasn't really thinking about all this before. I just jumped head first into this. I just was going out there. Oh, man. I remember I was even wearing, like, this little hoodie from Hot Topic with, like, ears oh, on it. I God. was like, that was me with, like, bad eyeliner, like, really <laughs> white ma- you know, uh, foundation. I didn't even know what I was doing. You know, <laughs> the way that you wear makeup in high school. I was like, basically, you know, that was me. And I was just like, what did I get myself into? I didn't know what I was doing. But I was really, it was like trial by fire. You know, I really just, I, there was so many, I have so many crazy stories, but I, I don't, re- I don't regret any of it because it really escalated my, my, um, maturity you know i was really i just was had so many characters thrown at me you could only imagine all the kinds of crazy people all the kinds of like there's so many like awesome people crazy people sad people there's so many people that came in crying for many reasons like people who were like five six hundred pounds were like holding me and crying and then one guy who i was i know i was just like it's like hard because you're emotionally connecting with these people every one of them and there was this one man who i never forget either who he had been married and his wife died and he was younger he was like 40s like somewhere so he wasn't very old or anything but his wife died and he was like really in love with her and he hadn't hadn't been with another woman sexually since she had died so he was coming to the ranch to be with me for the first time and he was in there crying he had brought a joint and he was like can i smoke this in here he He was was like like, nerve-wracked oh my gosh it was i know that's what i'm saying you see all kinds of people there was also a couple too that i always remember it was they were they they were a really cute couple yeah you get some couples too but they were like best friends they had like matching tattoos the the the, uh, wife she had a pink matching tattoo sleeve and he had the blue one and they did all this crazy stuff together and so So they wanted to come to the bunny ranch and do the thing and yeah what's one of the like the wildest experiences oh my gosh there's so many crazy ones but uh, (laughs) oh man oh so there were so many that come to my mind this is so precious um, you're like gushing over the yeah well it's such a labor of love that you have done it really it really is kind you're like really giving to society in a way that i'm sure people don't immediately perceive that craft as you're sharing your energy yeah Yeah. really it really is it was really like i was in all of these relationships with all these people and it just kind of like it's just like fast tracks you into like maturity into into a like understanding people and stuff like that and it was just i didn't need that you know more than i knew but um gosh (laughs) one of the crazy one one thing that comes to my mind right now though is there was this group of like business dudes that came in and they were like in suits and they look like you know like kind of like you know, kind of like lame kind of dudes, like, you regular, know, just regular like guys, a regular dude. I mean, <laughs> yeah. not like lame, but, you know, just like regular yeah. guys, like you wouldn't expect anything crazy out of these guys, just like a regular sex or whatever. And so the one guy picks me for the party. And so he asked me if I have a strap on. So this isn't even the crazy part. So I was like, OK, like, that's not actually that uncommon. That's normal. Like, yeah. In my marriage, too. 
We had some like, you know, yeah. anal stuff too. So guys like, you know, it's not that uncommon. Guys and, love the anal. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was Put like, up. okay, cool. Like, you know, it's a good way to start, whatever. And so he was like, oh, like, do you have, because uh, so I had Dixie cups for Listerine. And so he's like, can you get one of the Dixie cups? And I'm like, okay, cool. Oh, and so, oh, <clears throat> so we had a little, uh, you think you know where it was going? I think I do. <laughs> Yeah, so we had a little, <laughs> little cup there. I'm like, okay, whatever. But I was fucking him in the ass when he was getting ready to come. He's like, oh, we put it right there. He's like, put it by my dick. And so he sprayed yeah. the cum yep. into the Dixie cup and then he swallowed it. He's yeah! like, feed it to me. And I just went and like, feed it to him. He was like, <laughs> like just like, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. No way. I, <laughs> and wait, he slurped it up so fast. Yeah. You were like, Whoa. I know. I wasn't who I was expecting that out of when I, you know, you don't ever judge a book by the Seems like square. square. Never. <laughs> yeah, no, don't ever judge a square, you know. Don't ever <laughs> judge it. Don't, don't ever judge, a, judge square. a square by its suit. Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. Have oh. you ever had an experience yeah. like this, Tasha? Well, in making movies, I've definitely had some wild, like, Come experiences, but a the Dixie Cup thing, not in person, <laughs> but definitely if I've ever done like some sort of a live show online, like a virtual experience, you know, like on Sex Panther or OnlyFans or something, mm -hmm. where the per person will like want you to see them virtually. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, I've had people do that, and I'm always <laughs> kind of gagging because it just is really gross to me. Like, I'm not judging them like there's something wrong with them, but, like, it just it sickens me, like, to watch this guy come in a cup and then swallow it because I'm like, I don't really, I just don't like the way that it looks. You yeah. know, I love, I love that. <laughs> you like if, if you all, if anybody ever messages me and wants to like video chat and eat their own cum, I mean, I'm going to charge you a premium for me to watch because it's still Correct. my time. Correct. But I will be cheering you oh, up. I'll, cheer I'll be like, do it like, again. She's like, cool. yeah. Key. Do it again. Not even low key, high key. It's hard to hold that back. Oh, some no. of them love that. I, some I was trying to really yeah, not, like that. I was they not. Do. I was not. I was strangely not uh, grossed out at all. I was more like like uh, fascinated. I was not, I didn't know it was going there. And uh, like I thought I was just young and dumb, you know, kid basically getting into all this. And I was just like, whoa. But I was just always like, and if anybody's into anything, I'm just like, whoa. Like, yeah. Like I was always into that's, it. That's so, so funny because that's but very been, much how I am. Yeah. yeah. I, there's been some stuff, oh my gosh, that I've heard that, well, not that happened directly to me, but if I it happened to me, I'd probably cry. And there, there's something that happened to this girl when I, my very first trip. Okay. Oh my gosh. And she did cry too. And then she told a friend. <laughs> oh no. And she told her not to tell. And then she ran right to me and told me because okay. she was like, this is crazy. Oh my God. What <laughs> but anyway, so, so she was doing, you know, what we call a party, you know, and so she had booked this guy. And so this girl that told me and this other girl, like well, this was all our first trip. So we were all pretty new and uh, to all of this whole world. And so um, during the, during her, you know, uh, you know, so, I don't know, during her, whatever she was doing, you know, uh, with him, um, <laughs> she, <laughs> um, I guess he was getting ready to come. Okay. And so she was like, you know, trying to get him to come. And then when he went to come in cyber, he pushed out in there or he pushed in and then he shat all over her <gasps> bed as he was like pushing in to come. So I don't know how his like bowels got loose. That's what I was like, I'm saying, I don't know what they did before. What? Because like, uh, it could have been some anal stuff before or whatever. But he, he pooed and come? Yeah, at the I same time, no part of he like when he was like pushed okay. in to come, Tell me. he I guess shot all over her bed, and so she was like crying. She was he was he was like sorry, he didn't mean to do it on purpose. Because sometimes people mean to do that kind of stuff on purpose. Sometimes people they do. do. Yeah, and so yeah. I don't know. Maybe they he like did, and it was see... just playing it off. But yeah, maybe because she started crying, he was like, "No, I'm sorry." <laughs> but... Okay, that is but she was like scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that's why they always give you, it's called a setup. You put like this big these sheets <laughs> yeah. over your bed because, yeah, in case I'm crazy. No one's ever shat okay. during the thing, thank God. But that that's something that I think I would be grossed out by no matter what, no matter how much they're into it. So no, but, for yeah, me. she started crying. I don't think that girl ever came back either. Well, She's no. never somebody I ever, yeah, that, 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 that was like, traumatizing. It's going to be trauma for life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then she and came out. Remember the girl's name was Candy too because she and I, we started on the 
same day. Like we took the same uh, taxi to the ranch. So we were like, you know, we were cool and stuff. So she told Candy and then Candy came right to me. She's like, oh, my God, I got to tell you. She's like, she told me not to say anything. But oh, my God. You know, so she was like I, telling everybody, you know, I was just like, holy shit. I, oh, I wonder if that, anyway, like, that's going to happen to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that is so, yeah. I think that it could either be. A blessing or a curse? <laughs> maybe I think that was God's way of saying, Get just, the fuck out. Yeah, maybe it <laughs> just wasn't that for woman. her. Yeah, and I never had that. No, I'm just saying, oh, I think maybe the universe she, was like, Get the fuck out. You yeah, know? she mm-hmm. took that yeah. sign too. She did. She did. That, that woman could. went running for the hills. Good for her. <laughs> so how, I want to I want to hear about this. Princess to porn star. Oh, are you going to read it? You were a princess, yes. You are? I am. Oh, thank you. I want to, Thanks. but I want you to give me a synopsis of oh. your life. Oh, okay. Nobody, nobody no, shout like, on you, like, right? Like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Tell me how you were a princess and what happened. Me. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, so this is my book that I I wrote the thesis for. Or the thesis for my uh, master's program at Annenberg at USC. You're educated, okay? I'm educated. <laughs> okay. I was in specialized journalism, so I went to school because I knew I wanted to write a book, and I was able to use my thesis as my book proposal, which is like the easiest, best way to write a book. If anybody's thinking of writing a book. Go to school so that you can do your thesis Suck. as your book proposal. Once you graduate, oh. you can then just like go shop your book. Oh. Genius, genius mm-hmm. idea. Uh, because you have advisors there. You have professors and people that are like sitting there reading over your mm-hmm. proposal. And they're like, okay. oh, this is really bad. This is really good. <laughs> oh, you okay. know, they give you feedback. And okay. it, you wouldn't really have that outside of the yeah. academic situation. So I lucked out. Um, but it's a memoir. And it was it did start as something that was supposed to be light and fun, like this show. Yeah. <laughs> it okay. unfortunately got a little dark. But it got shat on. No. Oh, no. no. Absolutely not. Hopefully. But okay. it got it just got very um emotional. It's an emotional roller coaster. I think any sex worker and well, at least for me, I really enjoy reading other sex workers' memoirs. Yeah. I, I find them to be very relatable because mm-hmm. it's such a unique niche. And so I am hoping that other women in our business are like, you know, that they like it. But um, I really, I set out to. Oh, yeah. You got to sign them. Do you sign it? And I need oh, to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah, exactly. But I did set out to make it an empowering story about kind of how to own your autonomy and how to, you know, make money off of the patriarchy, so to speak. But it did end up being. Some of that and ending in, you know, some some stories that I didn't even really set out to tell. And I was just like, well, ah. when you have a pen to paper, sometimes you don't get to control yeah. what comes out. It's just, you know, like natural flow. Yeah. And then you're just and, yeah. kind of like, well, if this is what's coming out, then maybe it's what should be in the book. Yeah. So I do like how the book came out. It just wasn't a, originally what I thought it was going to be. But uh, the overall message at the end is that the most important part about sex is consent. So I'm really proud of the book. Yeah. So I take it you've had some non-consensual experiences. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. But it's just a I feel like even though that is like I feel like the moral of the story, I think there are a lot of entertaining chapters, especially like the first half of just growing up in Laguna Beach, California and coming to Los Angeles and getting into the adult industry and spending a lot of time at the Playboy Mansion. Like all that's really fun. Mm -hmm. So it's not just some emotional roller coaster about the patriarchy. It's also fun and entertaining. (laughs) Tell us about the Playboy Mansion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, my gosh. So when I was in high school, I was... Hell, yeah. Starting to yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, do you remember the show, The Girls Next Yeah. Time? So I was in high school when it came out, and I was like, bingo. <laughs> You're like, that's, that's it. That's me. That's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not even a question. Which one did you like? Poly. Everyone had a favorite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's... 100% my calling. Okay. I'm not even not even a question. Kind of like the way that I think a man or a boy watches like a football player yeah. and they're like, that's me. I'm Tom Brady. You know, uh-huh. like that's what they aspire to be like. Mm-hmm. So I like told everybody, I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. And I think a lot of people were like, okay, like I live in a small town in Laguna Beach where that is not acceptable behavior. Right. And also all my friends are like, all right, you've been watching that show too much. Yeah. Like <laughs> just not taking yeah. that idea seriously. But I was very serious about it. Oh, my God. Okay. So I moved up to L.A. and I wanted to get in. I was like, okay, 
how do I get into the Playboy Mansion? Like, I don't know anybody in LA that's that is connected, but I'm gonna go on Craigslist because Hell come yeah. on, where else do you go? Craigslist. Where right? else do you MySpace? go? MySpace. Yeah, yeah. You're trolling MySpace, and MySpace. I'm on Craigslist. Yep. Okay, I was on Craigslist too. Of course you were, because <laughs> it was the year to be on Craigslist. Yes. You know, so like, true. There was legitimate things happening on Craigslist. There's not uh, now. Don't stay go to away. Craigslist now. But in 2008, it was things legitimate. Were happening on Craigslist. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is there anything even comparable today? I don't think so. Honestly, it's just Instagram. It's all. It's Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so I'm on there and I see this casting and it's like Playboy model, this girl in a rink. She has like like a boxing rink and she has like a themed costume on. She's hot and she looks like a Playboy model. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, so it's a Playboy model casting. Yeah. Oh no. But I'm also on like Craigslist. 18. Yeah. I'm yeah. On Craigslist. You're all talking yes. to no one else, like not getting any sort of um, you know, feedback from friends. I'm just yeah. doing it. Yeah. So I meet this woman in Beverly Hills in her white Mercedes. And she is really pretty Mm -hmm. and really nice. And she explains the job. And the job is not a Playboy modeling job. It's an escorting job. Oh, (laughs) no. She's like, I'm going to take you back to the bunny ranch. Get on in. No, no, no. Very different. Different escorting. But, yeah. So she's like, we have a house in Beverly Hills. So, you know, you'll spend time with a person. And um, this is what you're going to get from it. And I'm like, oh. Am I, do I have sex with the person? I literally don't know what's going on. Right, right, right. But also I'm smart. So I like do know that's why I'm asking the questions. But right. she is like, I don't know if she thinks I'm like undercover. I don't know if she's just being shady and right. trying to course. Who knows? She's like, well, not necessarily. It's like, definitely you do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but regardless. So I'm like, now I like know what I'm kind of getting into. And so that opened up a door into like the sex world of yeah. sex work. And I realized pretty quickly that that just like wasn't for me. I was like, oh, I just don't like it. I don't like the guys. So I still want to be doing Playboy. So I start stripping at a strip club in okay. LA called Silver Rain and okay. went to foreplay after that. And luckily, I just met this man who was like, I'll take you up to the Playboy Mansion tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. And I let some man pick me up from my house, which I would never do today. Like, I am I'm a crime junkie. I'm listening to crime stories all the time. It would just never happen. Okay. But I'm, I was like, chilling. I let a man pick me up from my house. A stranger Y'all from did. a strip club? No, you would not. I would. If None gonna of take, us would let you. If he she would take me to a nice dinner, I'd just be like, okay, let's go to Afro, baby. Come on. Would. Would. Really? I wouldn't go to his house. A stranger in a car? Yes. I mean, if he's a nice man. Man. That's kind of where my mind was. It was yeah. like, he's going to take me to hell. And he did. When you're I young, life then, then, yeah. 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 When you're young, you, when you're you young, think like that. You're, you're like, like, whatever. It's CJ, fun, would right? do that. Yeah. CJ would do that today. Today. <laughs> okay. Well, some of us are still living <laughs> on the edge. That's, <laughs> well, I'm like, what could possibly go wrong? Do you have pepper spray? <laughs> I mean, I do boxing. I have pepper spray in my bag. <laughs> you always keep it with you, too? No, but I should. Yeah, even when my daughter walks the dog, everything, I always tell her. You take the pepper spray everywhere. You take like, your I'm pepper always spray. ready for anything. <laughs> Maybe a gun. Yeah, I know. I, I have them. multiple guns. I'm sure multiple you do, weapons. Oh, oh, yeah. You look like someone multiple that Multiple knives, knives. Machetes, combat way. knives. I love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. my bow. I used to. Uh, she got shoot, the bow. Yeah. No, and I an arrow? Com- yeah. I, I have a compound hunting bow. You're hunting I, people? <laughs> I, I would rather hunt people for sure. <laughs> oh, my. What Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. I started off with uh, just doing uh, archery competitions for years, and then I met like hunters, and then started like you know hunting Brit- turkeys. But that, what? That's it. Well, that was years a, ago. That was a, a wild card. Yeah. Jane of all, <laughs> all trades. I love Jane it. Jane of all trades. <laughs> so then the next time you get yeah. in a car with the mm-hmm. man. Brittany's gonna be in the back with a bow and arrow. And arrow. She's ready to but <laughs> you got into Only this. Only if he's a piece of shit. That's okay. right. Oh my okay. God. We're not <laughs> Brittany's anybody. A, Brittany's, a girl's girl. Brittany's a girl's girl. She got okay, you, girl. Okay, so you got to the mansion. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, so this man picks me up and he takes me up to the Playboy Mansion. What a good man. What a good man. Yeah. What a good man. <laughs> and he's like, you know, we're just here for fun in the sun. And we come in and he takes me right up to Hugh Hefner and he's like, this is Rachel. That's my real name. This is Rachel and Hef. Here she is. And we met and I was immediately like, I'm staying here. <laughs> so <laughs> I did end up staying like every Friday, Saturday and Sunday for like at least two years of my life. And wow. was, I was in college next door at UCLA. So mm. it was this was my sorority house. This was wow. like I rushed sororities and I got into one, Gamma Phi Beta. 
And I was like, nope, I have a sorority. It's right there next yeah. door. Uh-huh. It's house. the best it's one. It's the best one that there is, girls. You don't yeah. even know what you're missing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I spent a bunch of time up there, and I got to model for Playboy. For, yeah? Were you in the magazine? I was in the magazine. What year? Um, I asked Hef after I was in the magazine for UCLA's Girls of the Pack 10 for the year 2009, 2010. Okay. If I could be a playmate, mm. but I had modeled for the Fresh New Faces Playboy magazine, for at the actual magazine, for the Pac-10, for the girl. Like, there were so many different opportunities I had, but I was mm. not playmate, and that's all I wanted. Right. Especially because I was so deeply, like, invested. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just because, like, it's what I want. Like, I really felt like— I had earned it, like, in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so many of my friends were playmates, and I had a personal relationship with Huff. It was not sexual, but it was very personal. I would write him letters all the time. We would see each other every weekend. I spent so much time there. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yes, we'll get you tested. So I go down to Playboy Studio West with Arnie Freytag, and I'm so excited. I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh, this is my moment. And I test for playmate, and I go to his house afterwards, and I tell him thank you. I don't, I in my mind, I'm like, did I even say thank you or just that I had such a good day? It doesn't matter. I was there that night and I was so hopeful. And then I got a phone call the next week that was like, you know, you didn't make Playmate. Mm. And my, I was crushed. crushed. Yeah. And they're like, we're, don't worry, we'll give you Cyber Girl out of your pictorial we shot. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, great. Um, so what does testing for Playmate like involve? So you go into hair and makeup in their studio in Santa Monica, and you shoot with one of the in-house Playboy photographers. And at the time, it was Arnie Freytag and Steve Weta. And now I'm sure they have different people. But they test you. They take a million photos of you. They design an entire set around you and your personality. Mine was like a very feminine, girly um, set all pink everywhere and it was like you know like I was a young girl so that was like the theme of it and it was so cute and we just took a million photos that would potentially either make your play mate centerfold or just be a test for have to look and be like okay yes she's Mm -hmm. approved it's basically a way for him to give you the last stamp of approval got it so when I was denied I was just heartbroken. And a lot of my friends up there were like, don't worry, I'll just test again. Or don't worry, Cyber Girl is a good step. You could mm. become a playmate after Cyber Girl. And mm-hmm. my little mind at the time was like, absolutely not. I'm like taking control of this situation. <laughs> I, I had just read um, How to Make Love Like a Porn Star by Jenna Jameson. Jenna J- oh, I loved that book. So yeah. inspirational, so right? Good. <laughs> yeah. It, was it a really wild was. Ride. Why? It was. And I, What? Why is it inspirational? What's really interesting is it's not like some super happy story. Like the whole thing isn't. It's very. It's harrowing. Actually, you're like, oh my god, this person's gone through so much. But it's fascinating. It brings you in. You're like, oh, I want to be a porn star. Mm. This is amazing. Like this could be a way to really control my life situation, make money when I want, and just like be my own boss, own it. Yeah. And I was like totally inspired and since I had been rejected I had all this motivation and I was like I'm gonna be a porn star that's what I'm gonna do and so that's how I got into the adult industry okay so being denied from playboy as a playmate you from play from from playmate by playboy you were like from half himself (laughs) yeah who was kind of your friend so yeah that that would have crushed me did you guys stop talking so he wrote me letters. Um, that's how he used to communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like, you know, basically because you are doing porn, you can no longer come up here anymore. And you are no longer yeah, welcome that's a big deal to, to him. fun in the sun and to, you know, our Sunday night movie nights. And you knew better than this. And I'm taking your cyber girl pictorial down. And in my mind, oh. I'm like, well, I have plenty of shoots I've done for your magazine, in your right. magazine, in your side magazine. So I'm set. Right. You're fine. You can take my cyber girl pictorial down. Wow. And I was just so heartbroken. But years later, I actually... Okay, so when when I was up there, his wife, Crystal, his, now his widow, mm-hmm. she had two other girls there with her, too. And I won't even say the other girl's name. She's my friend now. But at the time, it was just like there was a lot of hierarchy. So you wouldn't necessarily, like, fraternize with his main girlfriends because it's, like, a jealousy thing. And you're, like, so, so many dynamics going on. Mm-hmm. But she was always there. And I brought it up to her via DM on Instagram. I was like, hey, do you remember when this happened? 
I can't believe he did that. Do you know any more information? And she's like, oh, my gosh. Well, you know, his widow, like, brought <laughs> brought your videos to him to be like, to out you, basically. But he had already found out about it, and he was really into it. And he, like, was watching your videos oh. and screening them and then it was really upsetting to her. Oh. And so then she asked him to disown me from the house. Oh. I didn't, that makes sense. I didn't a realize cat, cattiness. That yeah. porn was a no go for no, go. no stripping, yeah. no porn, no, no, ass, stripping, no sex work, no tattoos, no, sex work, no yeah. modeling nude for any other company. Yeah, he really wanted the girls oh. to be like an all American girl next door. Yes. His yes. all American yes. girl next door. Yes. yes. Okay. So there was nudity really... for me, but not for thee. Yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what a lot of these companies were back in the day, which I think Jenna Jameson touched on it in her book. Where it's like you really didn't own. I mean, I, I, uh, a newer thing that probably maybe more of the people that might listen in ha- have potentially seen is Life After Porn on uh, Netflix. Never seen it. You haven't. It's re- it's really good. I won't watch it. But it talks about um, how a lot of these porn stars they were rock stars, but they weren't getting paid. They were getting paid peanuts mm-hmm. and they didn't even own their names. They didn't have rights to a lot of things, which is even how something like OnlyFans has come Thank about you. because everybody we own, you know, I mean, we don't own all of it. I guess it, OnlyFans would own it. But for the most part, we're making, you know, the largest portion of our content. Mm-hmm. And we essentially like our photos and everything, everything that we take, you know, provided that photographer doesn't take them. If we take them on our phone, we own all our content. And so it puts the money in our hands and it pu- puts most of the control in our hands, which for the most part is a better is That's a better in the thing. Book too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it's interesting how I had known that he really wanted the girls to be pretty, uh, pretty pure, pretty straight laced. aside from being in the yes. magazine. I was able to go to a few fun in the suns. And um, I always felt so privileged. Cause like, I'm a brunette. I I felt like I was doing something naughty, like I was infiltrating. <laughs> yeah, the blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was able to go as a painted lady for a bunch Me of too. the parties. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. I was drunk, unfortunately, for most of it. So don't ask <laughs> Fortunately. me. Fortunately. Yeah. Well, I wish I would have been sober, though. I always feel like I, it would have been such a better use of my time. But c'est la vie. And um, I did know that he really, he he wanted to put Playboy, like, apart from from that and yeah. it was which yeah, i think is yeah. why now it's almost like a, a ladies magazine anymore you know because well, I mean, it's like it's changed a lot it's not yeah. what it used to be yeah yeah i would i would agree with that yeah so you did that and then you stepped into porn and then like how did you what was your first scene how did you enjoy porn like what tell us about that so okay so reading her book that was like my map okay. of like getting into the adult industry. Okay. So I literally went to her agent that she referenced in the book. Really? Wow. Okay. Like I really didn't know anything outside of the book, mm-hmm. right? So I go there and I'm like, oh, no, this isn't going to work for me. It was like just a dilapidated office. The guy was so old. I was like, uh, this is not, you're, I'm sure you're professional, but right. I deserve more than this. You're coming from Playboy. It's uh, like a mansion. Uh, in the, right. Yeah, and it's just, it was, yeah. it just was, it, he was a really nice guy. I just wasn't going to work. So then I find somebody else and sign this contract and the guy literally gets me nothing and I'm like at the time you know I'm young I'm hot there's no reason for it but he maybe had too many models or like Mm -hmm. maybe whatever it was and I was like okay well I'm out of here he's like no you signed 10 years with me like some like psychotic illegal contract so I write the biggest agency at the time LA Direct Models Mm -hmm. and I'm like hi I want to be a porn star. Here are my Playboy photos. And then I have a meeting like the next day. And my agent like made me pay the guy a couple thousand dollars to yeah. kind of fuck off. And <laughs> then, you know, he was just like, OK, um, you know, a lot of people Photoshop their pictures. So yeah. he's like, I'd like to like see you naked, just like a call, like a go see. Yeah. And so he's like, yeah, you're going to work a lot. And he literally booked me all the time. I worked so much. My first um, what was your first scene? My first scene was a solo scene for Twisties. Twisties and it was yeah. with a photographer named Dean Capture, who's fabulous, who just shot a promo ad for my book. And he's just like, he's my first photographer. Nice. And it was a really nice experience. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so blessed. He's like such a nice, cool guy. Was it awkward? Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way that somebody wants to see me in this position masturbating. This what is position? such a weird, like, 
legs back like you're holding you know you're holding your ankles and I'm like why would somebody want to see this because I'm just not used to that like in Playboy there was never anything like that that's right yeah yeah and I just yeah yeah. I just never I would never if I envision a woman masturbating at least at that time I would never be like that but, like legs spread yeah, open. Yeah, but I look back and I'm like, those, those are really pretty photos. Yeah, those are great. and it's hot. You can see everything. So totally. <laughs> like, that's why in my here. mind, I was like, what the fuck is going on? This is so <laughs> ugly. Why would somebody want to see this? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but yeah, no, it was definitely like a daunting feeling, but I liked it. And it just took me, it took me like a good amount of time to like get used to making movies. Like I wasn't good at first. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 I would imagine, yeah, like anything like having having sex for the first time um with somebody that's kind of like a stranger where you're working at the bunny ranch or where you're having even sex with yourself first time on camera. Like these are brand new, like that a brand new thing in your brain, experience in your brain. You're like opening new brain waves and you're just like, this is so wild. Yeah. And yeah, you have somebody that you don't know, a whole person you don't know, and then you have this camera in your face and you're probably thinking like, you're worried about yourself, you're worried about the experience. Well, you're worried about what other people are going to think. My, yeah. I come from a very small town. Everybody yeah. knows everybody. It's Same. almost like you a do small too, town. Right? Like, uh, Yeah, kind of. I mean, I, it's, it's, yeah. it's like, a, you know, it's, it's in Southern a California, you feel so like, it's still like, it still feels like it's, even though it's a small town, it's still Southern California, uh-huh. so it's not like... You know, but don't not, you feel like, yeah, like a lot of like, or something? A lot of porn girls come from small towns, like, um, yeah, but a lot of them don't come from Southern California, though. That's yeah. a thing. A lot of them come from like the Midwest or something. Mm-hmm. That's what I usually think of when oh. I think of small town. Yeah, you oh. know, because we are like we're like default so- SoCal, so we're still like close to everything. And yeah. we still have like a lot of people, no matter where you're at. Really. Yeah, well, like Laguna Beach is mm-hmm. a really isolated town, so you yeah. can't get anywhere from it. And so mm-hmm. I mean, my friends that I have now are the people I grew up and went to preschool with like we know each other like it is wild to me that it's that small the the graduating class is like 200 people we only have one high school oh my god did you guys mine was that small too but it was because I was in a continuation school I had to but it was like yeah but it's that small though but I was like it's small because of that but that's crazy though that was it like a private school or no we just have one one school in our whole town wow yeah that is small and I was just the whole time worried I was like oh my gosh not worried but just thinking like People are going to see this. At what did home. they say when they first saw it? Because of course it gets out. It always gets like, out. It always gets. That's what I always yeah. tell everybody. I'm yeah. like, it's gonna get out. It's There's gonna get no out. secret about this. Yeah. What'd they say? So what did it's been a journey. The beginning was really rocky. People were very concerned and also alarmed and like not accepting. And then all of a sudden I woke up one day and I was like, no, I'm not gonna live like this. Like I I'm going to reach out to everybody that I'm no longer talking to. I am not going because I was also almost, I guess, feeling shame and pushing people away. Yeah. So it wasn't just like a one sided thing. So I just made a decision. I was just like, no, these are my friends. They've been my friends my entire life. I'm still going to be friends with them and my family. And I'm going to reconnect with everybody. And I worked really hard to do that. And so now we're chilling. It's good. Nice. But it was a really rough couple of years. And what about mm-hmm. you, Brittany Amber? I I had a pretty, I'll, I'll just like to just make things like uh, simple. I don't know. I just had a pretty bad childhood. So I feel like I didn't have to, you know, explain anything I was doing to nobody. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I had, you know, like great parents and mm-hmm. I felt like, oh, I feel bad if I did. You know what I mean? Because I, I think I would if I had like good friends and a good mm-hmm. family and stuff. I would be I would also feel the same way. Like I would be like, you know, but uh, I didn't but you, have that. That's why I was just like when I first did it, I felt like proud of it. And I was like, yeah. fuck you, everybody. Like I'm a porn star. <laughs> but it was just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I was just like I was always like excited about it. I was like, yeah, I thought it was cool. And I never felt like bad about it or anything. But good yeah, I didn't you. really you know, have, like, the best um, upbringing to tell me, like, oh, you should respect yourself or anything like that. Was, was your just mom like, Hell yeah. or your dad not around or either of them not um, around? Or- you know, they were just, uh, I mean, to make a long story short, like, abusive on drugs and, oh um, you know, so I didn't have to answer to them. Yeah. You so know you being mean? able to take care of yourself and make something of yourself trumps anything you could have ever yeah. felt mm-hmm. in the way of, like, mm-hmm. guilt it's like, holy shit, yeah. I can do this and live a good life. Uh, yeah, I guess. But here, here's the thing is like, you know, when I started at, at the, the Bunny Ranch, because I was going to say, too, and you were saying how, you know, it's different from, 
you know, one thing to the other because it is all of it's different, even from from the ranch to like being in front of a camera or being, you know, a solo or with a per, like a, a, a person, a, another person, male or female. For, it's all, you know, a whole different experience. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, though, before shooting, my, you know, my first film that I was like, oh, well, I've already done this basically right. at the ranch and because um, I had already done softcore, I guess, for the HBO show mm -hmm. that I was like, that's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. But no, it was crazy because <laughs> I uh, I got a really bad agent at first. I didn't research nobody. And I don't know if you remember, you know, I don't know if I should say his name. Yeah, but, say our fucking name. Uh, I don't know if, shitty, if he's so. not around anymore. Anyway, oh, okay. he's been he actually after I had left him, he moved out of the country and kind of disappeared. But his name was Dick Nasty. And he was a oh, OK. <laughs> do, you, do you remember him? Imagine you, Dick no. Nasty didn't turn out. So Dick Nasty was nasty. Yeah, he might have he left before sound you. He doesn't licensed and bonded. Yeah, now I know. <laughs> Well, there, but we, you know what? You learn. You learn through trial yeah, and error. Totally. Oh, oh, yeah, totally. I got a lot of trial was, and error in my life. Oh, I'll tell you yeah. what he did. So the first scene that I did, it was it was all right. It was you know pretty standard and. Um, but literally, the second scene, he had set up and. He set up a scene with with him. I knew so he's it. A, he's an older man, you know. Oh, so it was this. like a young girl, older man thing, and that that wasn't the even the bad part. So I wasn't even mm -hmm. thinking too much about it. I came from the bunny ranch. I'm like, oh whatever. I fucked yeah. a lot of old guys, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so he lied to me. He told me, okay. So at the end of the scene, it's all going to be in one scene. A few guys are going to come in and come on your face, and and that's and that's that, and you know, and, and it's like it's all cool, da, 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 kind of thing. And I was like, all right, cool. So after we did the scene, he was like, oh, go get, you know, touch back up for the next scene and I was thinking like the next scene I thought it was all going to be in one scene they're right. going to come in after he's like oh no no there's like a change of plans now or whatever so I went and I got myself touched up and everything and he was like oh come in the room to see who you're working with I walked into the room and it was literally over 30 guys. Whoa! It was a whole room because it was even a small room. Too. I, I looked, I was like everywhere I could see. He told me it was 30. So it was probably more like 40 because he was like, oh, it's really like, you know, 30 or whatever. I didn't start counting. Like, there's so many. I was just like, there's so many guys. I've never seen those so many guys in one room. And this was literally my second scene. I've never even been with two guys at once or multiple right. people or anything like that. At the ranch, you know, you can't have like two guys book one girl. Right. So there, there was one time when I had um, a, a party where it was another girl, and another guy, and then me and you know another guy in the same room. Mm -hmm. That was literally the extent of it. Right. And so I didn't know what I what I could even do at this point. And so he was just like, "Well, if you don't do it, then you know the world word's going to get around that you're difficult to work with. Oh. Everybody's here literally, already. This is my whole book, and it's so disgusting. Oh. This is like if somebody asked me to get into porn now, I'm like, mm -hmm. no, don't yeah. do it. Well, if you if you get in the right way, like you know, yeah, you but this is a risk. Who, the fact oh, that this God, is a risk, yeah. I don't even think it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, this was back in um, in early 2008. It's it was like January horrible. 2008. So it was that was a long time ago. I'm and so I, sorry. I don't know if things are really like that anymore, especially now with where girls can create their own content and there's not, you know, no other options really. Right. But anyways, he put me on the spot. It was just like everybody's here. Like there was a whole room full of people that were yeah. sitting there jerking their dicks, <laughs> getting. I mean, you like, feel like it's all dependent uh, on me. I, I, well, it was. It, it was and. <laughs> Oh my God! So, anyways, um, yeah. So I'm sitting here. I'm just like you know doing my thing, and oh they had a cup. God. It was like this yellow no. um, Sunday cup. Stop. So they're all coming on my face. I had to catch it all here. Oh. It's just add to the cup. I'm literally yeah. gonna. Buy. This is just horrible. I'm I so did. sorry this oh happened my God. to you. It was crazy. Well, so um, it, all of it was going into this cup, and it was a lot because it was like thirty something guys. <laughs> it was so much. And then he gave me a straw, and no, he was like, "Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay." I'm literally oh, this is. Oh, so no. I, oh, so I was sorry. sitting there. Oh my god! I know it I'm was like so all sorry. in my eyes. You've had come in your eyes too, right? Because you know I didn't even know about that well, either. I had my eyes wide eyes. open. Have you? I mean, yeah, I mean, but, uh, you know like, how that feels. A, yeah, there's a difference. But right? this feel, oh, does this feel? Does this feel? My eyes, so my eyes like, were swollen red. Of course, it is a form under. of rape. And so <laughs> I feel like that's you were abused. You were. Oh, well, yeah. Coercion this was definitely trial by come. And you know, here's the thing is too is like this was really, you know, just a way of like. I, th I feel like a lot of people kind of like mosey on into the industry and don't really know yeah. what's ahead of them. And it exactly. was like, you know what? Boom. Like, I got yeah. smacked in the face no, with, with reality all at once. So I just had like, it was it was probably something that I needed at the end of the day, especially being in the industry as long as I have. And I was never, I've never been somebody who's like a sensitive person or right. like a very easily offended person or somebody does something to me or oh, like, whatever, who cares? Like, I'm, yeah. you know what I mean? It, so, uh, so I do, I do, um, 
um, appreciate it for that, for what it was. But yeah, when right. I think back about it, I don't like that I was taken advantage of like right. that at all. It wasn't that was youthful. It's corrosion. That, yeah. It's disgusting. But I was sitting there trying to suck it no. down. He wanted me to suck down every last drop. Like, and he was, oh, like, yeah. and he was like laughing to the directors like, oh, this is yeah. great. Like, you know, that they you know, because he lucked that I was having that reaction too. Like I couldn't yeah. suck it down. And he was like, oh, this is great. Like, I wanted, I, loved I, it. I really, this is a very powerful story. I really want to thank you for sharing that because I think sometimes people, like you were just saying, they really, they think that there is a lot of glamour, like how we were saying we read Jenna Jameson's book and that it was it was glamorous, it was exciting. And people don't realize that there is real consequences that needs to be done before we get into this. There, Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's consequences that happen, but there's real research too. And mm-hmm. it's okay to say no. And this is one of the things that I think is really important about the show mm-hmm. is that it's important to talk about these things. Yeah. So I really appreciate that you just like, you, so you, you are like, you are a very carefree person. I really relate to that because I'm very welcoming and open as well. Mm-hmm. And I've def- I've been in some situations where I think back and I'm like, that probably wasn't such a great situation. Mm-hmm. But I think it's also um, important the way that you even talked about it. You were like, yeah, in a way I, I learned from it. And now, mm-hmm. you know, you, it sounds like you you wouldn't do that again, that which is very in jail, which is very. Per- oh, no. Important. Oh, yeah. No, he was horrible. It's I mean, disgusting. Um, yeah. But it's important that everybody research when they get when they sign mm-hmm. contracts, when mm-hmm. they get involved. But honestly, with there's nothing you could have done to prevent that. You probably mm-hmm. could have researched. He could have been a legit agent. Mm-hmm. And then you're in a position. And this is why I feel like OnlyFans is so empowering mm-hmm. because you can just do it on your own from your own house. Mm-hmm. But you're in a in a position of vulnerability where you can literally not say no because you're scared for your life and for your safety Mm -hmm. and you do not know what's going to happen and it's not like you're unique in that story everybody in porn unfortunately Mm -hmm. if you've done like traditional hardcore porn Mm -hmm. and you've been in it for long enough you're going to have a horrible experience like that and that's why I'm just kind of like "Mm, thank god for OnlyFans yeah Mm -hmm. I know I think that's one of the reasons why it's exploded because it puts the um the content creation in the hands of of the performers you get to choose both of you girls being on there get to choose who you work with you could even stop something in the middle i don't know maybe you guys have where you're just like you know what i'm not this doesn't feel right or i don't even know maybe you film something you're like i don't want to put that out i don't feel like that looks good of me or whatever like that's really the beautiful thing we don't have to listen to these people anymore you old know, white men to. that's exactly <laughs> who but <laughs> I'm sure that there was I mean I'm sure that there was probably some ladies in there too or you know people it's very rare that there's evolved. a female abuser in the adult industry I've, de- I've definitely I have a, I definitely have a story no, I'm just saying it was, it's rare it's yeah. like out of all of the all of my experiences with all the directors it's yeah. an old white but man it, it can that's, definitely happen oh. though with or with, young with, ones there's also a young yeah. one too in there in general yeah, yeah. yeah. with yeah. multiple Un- unforge <laughs> well yeah. I just want to preface too that we love we love men on this podcast we're not we're not <laughs> man bashing men we men are, pay we my bills so i definitely love men but unfortunately there are <laughs> some people out there that you can't you can't trust and no, i think that's... even it's not i don't know if it's just a man thing i think that in any industry where there is money to be made off of taking advantage of somebody it you know mostly women are in the porn industry and so They're the bedrock of the yeah. porn industry, but men have the power in our, in the adult industry, like the hardcore performing. Yeah, side of I it. mean, also, also women don't aren't typically going to seek out those roles. Most women aren't seeking out. We know, obviously, we had Holly Randall. There's people yeah, who are interested Holly. in it. Sure, she's but amazing. Holly grew up in that. Those yeah. her parents are pornographers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's very. Yeah. There's going to be the demographic is going to be men, well, and then mostly there's a female lot of, like, performers. Glass ceilings in porn, though, because they keep that that power to themselves that's why they're not unionized uh, i think there's a lot of industries that aren't unionized but i'm not saying that the men aren't aren't doing the abusive things i'm saying yeah. i don't think it's inherent in Patriarchy. men to be that way you i don't feel that way i don't I, okay i no. don't that's it. we can disagree that's no, fine. It's okay yeah. I, I love don't. men like i make my money off men but i i know we live in patriarchy mm-hmm. that's why most people in power are men i think i would argue that in and it's been shown in other nations where women 
when given the choice, choose roles that are not in the in let's say in the porn industry. Definitely women are seeking out roles that, that are caretaking or more because Sometimes, women and men are different yeah. most of the time. I would say in porn, it's a little bit different because women in porn oftentimes are and want to be in charge, but that a lot of agencies, directors, production companies do not want to hire women for those mm-hmm. roles, even if they want to be mm-hmm. in those roles. And yeah. that women, when they get into those roles, I will not say names, mm-hmm. become very misogynistic themselves because mm-hmm. they need to be able to control the situation, which is where men have the power. Mm-hmm. I mean, have you seen the Barbie movie? Anybody? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh my God. It's so fucking good. You have to see it. It's like speaks to this conversation. <laughs> yeah. But I like, think... no, hey, it's my it was my undergrad. Like that was what I studied was, was mm-hmm. women's studies. So I'm just like oh, very cool. much I feel like once I've seen what I've seen, it's so difficult not to see it, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think whenever I think when people study something a lot, I did my undergrad and half my master's in psych and i think when you adopt when you look at something with one lens because that's what you're training and then you're going to see it from that lens and we all do that um but yeah. again i agree with you in the porn industry is it's like own beast it really is for sure um <laughs> yeah and the point is just like people are going to exploit people mm. the story that you just told like i had a hard time not like f- crying that mm. hurts yeah. me so bad and i don't want to I want to be careful not to like project my emotions onto yeah. you because your experience of your life is more important than my understanding mm. of your experience. But man, that like really like hurt me. And I don't know. I Do you have any kids? Yeah. So you have a daughter, right? Mm-hmm. And I do. And it's I guess like something changes. Yeah. A little when I think of like I see everyone now kind of as a kid Mm, like when they are hurting I think of it's hard for me not to think of like wow you were like an innocent little kid at one point Mm. yeah stuff Mm. happened to you and it made you who you are it's not to get like too sappy but that's Mm. it's but you also mm. come across as very strong as well very worldly sounds like you have built a very good life for yourself you're here clearly this is the pinnacle of your life i'm sorry <laughs> it's just gonna that you're you're on the top now yeah, of the mountain yeah. and it's just hopefully gonna just keep on skyrocketing <laughs> for from sure inside only i fans. know when i was young i could have never thought that you know i would have anything that i have now or even have even any even like a better job than like a fast food employee you know right. that, that was like my highest uh, uh, aspiration even right. then like was just at least like if i could at least just like get a job and get on Steady with my paycheck. life You know what I mean? Because I left home when I was 16 because Mm -hmm. I was in a really weird, abusive situation that I don't want. I wouldn't want to get into. If you, Mm -hmm. if you, if you guys are sensitive, Mm -hmm. it's like it's not a good story. It's really Mm bad. And um, you know, the the abuse started, you know, in my early teens, and um, that's really where you know things really started, you know, changing for me. That's why when stuff like that happened, it Mm -hmm. was just kind of easy, just like whatever, you know, because I've been through a lot worse. And also the things too that like not even the the actual like physical sexual abuse and even those kind of things. The things that really like get to me that like make me emotional is there was days where I went without eating, even ha- even having a drop of food. Mm. I remember opening up the refrigerator and there's only ketchup and mayonnaise and half of an onion. I remember like I could see it like burned into my mind, you know, mm. thinking like there's absolutely like nothing I could do because I was also a kid. There's nothing you can do at that point. You rely on your parents. And I remember because um, it was on the third day you know, we're getting really desperate at this point. My sister and I, we came up with this game and whoever lost had to find food. And so that's when, uh, so I ended up losing and then I went and I got that onion and I chopped it up and I went to like saute this onion. So finally, like that's when my dad finally showed up and then got us food. But like, that's how desperate, you know, we've been sometimes in our lives, you know, and, and you can't do anything because you're you're a kid yeah, and it's like i couldn't go out and get a, in a job yeah. or go do anything you know and, and we live in a country where it's very easy to get those kind of like food and stuff like that for kids resources like mm-hmm. that you know that's another thing that really angers me is like my mom could have very easily right. done something but it was just not her priority like drugs right. were her priority you know just and, the fact that you're able to provide it sounds you're you're successful in your in your um, craft now. So just the fact that you're able to provide presumably a full fridge full of food for yourself, for your family, I would mm-hmm. imagine it's 
incredibly rewarding. Oh, yeah. No, I know. Position. Even the small uh, wins are just like, I never would have thought I've had. I remember the first time when I moved from an apartment into a house. I yeah. remember walking around just like, I never even thought I would be in a house because I, even when I was growing up, we lived in trailers and in small mm-hmm. apartments. You know, I lived so in I a trailer like, too. Oh, in a house. <laughs> so I'm like, in a house. Yeah. I couldn't get, get over it for years. I was like, you just walking around like, wow. I'm so OnlyFans help you <laughs> help you buy a house mm-hmm. and. What are you doing so on actually, your OnlyFans? I haven't bought a house yet. Um, I'm actually, that's the thing too. Is um, I could easily buy a house now, but the the thing is, uh, I'm still paying rent at the place that um, I've been in for years because I really, I just, I like it. And it's like, mm-hmm. re- it's really cheap and it's uh, or cheap for um, what I'm getting mm-hmm. rather. Um, but um, I don't know where I want to. I don't know if I want to stay in California. You know, it's like a, yeah. a matter of that. I don't really know where I want to go, and I want to stay. I want to um, because everyone's like, you know, what, just like jump in, and it's an investment. So you know, even if you don't want to stay there forever, you can rent it out or. or I I don't know. I think I want to get a place where I could like stay there forever and fix it up and be happy and have like a bunch of because I, I do a lot of content and I do a mm-hmm. lot of content for YouTube and stuff. And so my YouTube's really successful now. I'm always trying to have like different backgrounds mm-hmm. and different things like that to really mix it up. And, and there's that's a lot what, of OnlyFans creators and mm-hmm. YouTubers here in California that you could collaborate with and do all of that stuff with. And so you have a lot of easier access to people here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's why that I know, but it's like also living in California too, with like state tax and all that kind of stuff too. All, all <laughs> the technical stuff, because yeah, it is definitely more beneficial to be in this mm-hmm. area. And even my partner says too, like he wants to either be near here or, or San Diego because mm-hmm. he's from San Diego. Yeah. And uh, you know, so I probably will, you know, because it makes sense. Because yeah, right now I'm like, you know, doing so much cre- uh, creating and doing so many collabs mm-hmm. that it would be. Who's the uh, last person you collaborated with? For your the own last fans? person I collaborated with was Alexis Fox. Oh, oh we, we love yeah. Alexis. Alexis. Yeah. She's great. I love yeah. her so much. She's oh my so gosh. funny. She did it. I, I haven't done a dab in years and give me a dab. <laughs> oh my god. She's a, such a star. Yeah. Oh, she's <laughs> yeah, the best. No, she's the best. She yeah. is. Have I you ever worked, worked with her, Alexis? Yes. Oh yeah. my God, she's mm. so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. wow. did you guys podcast shoot? Too. Oh, we did her podcast, and okay. then she was on my YouTube channel, and then we did um, a collab for our OnlyFans. So okay. that will be coming out soon. That's my next thing I have to edit. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> oh okay. yeah, lo- I love that. What were you guys? What was the premise? Um, we did a J-O-I, like a double J-O-I, okay. and, then, and then we fucked each other, you know. Huh. <laughs> I love how she throws that in there, and then we fucked each other, yeah. you know. And okay. then, so on my YouTube channel, we um, did a lingerie try on how we tried on a few outfits and then we picked the, the outfits that we wanted to wear for the scene in the in the YouTube so that it connected and then, oh, okay. then we, then we oh, went into that yeah. <laughs> that's clever so smart yeah, yeah. yeah I love that and then like do you have any creative um, scenes that you've shot that really stand out you know sometimes when I send something mm-hmm. out on OnlyFans I'll get like a lot of really good feedback and you're mm-hmm. you're like oh this popped off do you have anything like that um, one thing that popped in my mind and this is something I want to do again soon um, was this underwater scene that I did and I, I went to this this place out in um, in Palm Desert or I, I think it was in Palm Springs I, I forgot it was one of the Palm cities one out there one of the Palms or, yeah Desert Palm Springs or Desert Hot Springs I think maybe it was Desert Hot Springs mm-hmm. but there's this place though it was actually um a pretty good, um, rate on the room. I think it's only like a couple hundred bucks or something, something around there. But inside of the room, it has a private pool that has, um, is it like uh, clear? bottom? Oh no, it's, um, it's, it's like a big, like it's a, it's a jacuzzi kind of, but it is a pool though. It's like a big pool. And then, um, it has uh, the natural spring water, oh, wow. so it's not chlorinated and yeah. everything. And so, you open up so, your eyes. Yeah, yeah, and also, yeah, I think it would probably be better to fuck in too. All right, yeah, yeah. 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 she's like, not my eyes don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but, like, but see, yeah, I got to keep the pH balance right. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. Yeah, but um, so we had like some GoPros and did some underwater stuff, and then I went underwater, was like giving a blowjob underwater, and then oh my, how do you give a blowjob underwater? I know, I had to keep what? like coming back up for air. And then we, we edited it together so that it looked like it was like longer than what it was each time. And I'd keep coming up and then going back down. Okay, I'm here. very interested to <laughs> this see is this hilarious work of art. And awesome. Yes, and then also to you know, there's the cherry on top. I brought these underwater colorful lights too. Okay. So I put those all in there too, and they were all like you know shifting and morphing colors and stuff. So it was really cool. Oh and, my god! Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's like a blowjob from a mermaid. Yeah, oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> Obsessed. Oh my god. Tasha, I what love are that. what is something you're known for you like doing a lot on your page oh um i would say my favorite scenes are like outdoor scenes outdoor boy girl scenes ah uh. um like 
I have a, an exhibitionist. Yeah. You know, no one's around, but the thought is that somebody could be around. Yeah. But usually, like a national park or like Bora Bora or like Yosemite or something mm. sick like that. Those Three are like my very f- incredible like ideas. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I the, love, those are all my scenes. Like, oh, okay. I love, yeah, I've shot real them. scenes. Real scenes. Okay. Yeah. Yosemite. Yeah. Yosemite. Um, before it burned, right? Wow. It burned. Oh, um, yeah. Amazing, like outdoor candid stuff I obsessed I love I like that because I feel like it puts the viewer into a place where it's like that could be me and my girlfriend in nature Mm -hmm. and it's not like so contrived but I do like like the glam stuff too Mm -hmm. I think that's really fun I have some great like glamour stuff on there I love girl girl boy girl boy boy girl what do you like about girl girl I like girl girl because I love women Mm. and they're just so pretty and I feel like, I don't know, there's something something special about doing a girl-girl scene. But I definitely prefer boy-girl. Okay. okay. <laughs> that was my next question. Yeah. yeah. Are you dating women in your uh, day-to-day or are we dating just men or are we dating both? I'm dating both. I'm open. I'm like, okay. man or woman, whoever is the one for me is who I want. How do you find people? Do you find it's hard to find people to date? No. So I like... She was like, they're just knocking at my (laughs) door, baby. Literally. (laughs) No, I like use... This is crazy I because I have a lot of friends in the industry. I'm Mm -hmm. sure you do too, like coworkers or other adult actresses. And they're like, yeah, I would never get on a dating dating site that's so weird. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel like use your tools. Yeah. I live... I'm not even going to say where I live, but it makes sense that I would use a dating tool mm-hmm. because it's like a way to connect with people, mm-hmm. you know? I was on seeking arrangements all the time back in the day. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'm on Bumble, girl. So. Okay. <laughs> I'm on like, Bumble, though? Okay, Bumble yes, is the one where the woman, site. you have picks. a sugar dating. This is a real date. It's Does when the, you have. Well, I was on uh, real dates, too, uh, girl. They were, <laughs> they were real, all right. Yeah, well, it sounds like the motive is different. <laughs> the motive was very different. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, no, but, but Bumble I'm is on where, <laughs> Is Bumble where the woman picks the guy or yes. picks the man? Ma- okay. So well, they they have to initiate conversation. Yes. Like, you have to slide into their message and okay. be like, what up? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's incumbent upon the woman. The man cannot uh-huh. do it. Okay. Just All for right. the first hello. For the fir- okay. That's it. Okay. So you both have to match. The guy has to like you. You have to like him. And then the only way the conversation starts is if you are like, hi. Okay. I mean, I like that. I like mm-hmm. the hinge app. I feel like okay. that is really nice. It has an algorithm that matches you with people that I think you would meet in your day-to-day life. Okay. I've heard good things about hinge. Like a lot yeah. of people who have had successful relationships off hinge. But if anybody that works at hinge is watching this, I <laughs> fucking got kicked off of Hinge last Whoa, week and I was so pissed about it. How? Okay, so... <laughs> you were linking your Instagram or your OnlyFans. Uh-oh. Neither. Okay, damn. So I have like a book signing in LA at the end of this month okay. and I like put the flyer which is just like the book it's mm-hmm. not anything like scandalous but i i figured why the fuck not what yeah. i'm i'm going to put that in my profile cuz you can choose like a bunch of pictures and then i can just promote my business i i see other people doing it why not? Okay. And I think that's why I got kicked off. Uh-huh. Yeah, that might that might be because I know that they do kick people off if they're like promoting their OnlyFans or any work or promoting though. I don't even think anything, it's adult. I think it's work related. Anything outside of that app is right. which which is any app you're, now. You're like you're promoting, and I just didn't yeah. even read the fine print because I have that on my Bumble. I didn't think anything of it. Right. And then I'm sure I can get it back. So yeah. now, you but are, if anybody's watching this, okay, <laughs> give it back. You're single and alone, or what's happening? When's the last date? we went out on i mean i am single and thriving okay i um went out on a couple of dates last week okay they weren't the one <laughs> what kind I of date yeah. naturally like through friends which okay. was interesting and i was just like i'm oh, i'm trying that no. for the last six months it's been hit or miss but i i will say kayla tried to set me up once <laughs> oh yeah he's a great man he's how did a, it go he's a great man but he's not a great man for me but he was a nice guy he's a, sw- he's we a were swinger in, we were in a fight a what? we were in, a swinger oh, we were in a fight yeah. and then now we're not in a fight i told you that he's right? very cool yeah but you're yeah. not a swinger shout no so shout why would you also, be a she, also she knew he was a swinger yeah, so it's, it's I, no shame on paul i was at <laughs> yeah shout out paul we love you paul and we're, you were paul like whatever cool i'm just gonna she I, thought she could tame the wild beast no absolutely okay okay i want to preface this absolutely fucking 
fucking not. I would never be a delusional woman in that way, <laughs> thinking that. I'm trying to change somebody because I wouldn't like that if somebody did that to me. Um, and Paul knows that. We love you, Paul. Um, he's going to love that he's getting a shout out, by he's the like, way. He's like, say my name like, some yes, more. Exactly. Talk about I, me. <laughs> we, I met him. I went to a sanctum party. Yeah. And he was like, I know you. I'm oh, Kayla's God. friend. And then I came back and I was like, your friend's really cute, Kayla. And she was like, yeah, he's a great guy. We ended up not connecting like for a multitude of reasons. But Paul do be loving the ladies. And the ladies be loving Paul. There ain't Paul, nothing wrong with he's, that. You're just not one of the ladies. Man. Yeah, that was not. Yeah, we definitely, we were, like, I was I was fine with that or whatever. We didn't connect on a, a no. bunch of different things. However, we're good We're good friends yeah. now. We love Paul. Yeah. But if, you're, <laughs> if you don't swing, you can't date a swinger. I, honestly, what? here's my th- here's my philosophy. I think all men cheat, and so I was oh. appreciating <laughs> that he was like very open and honest about that. Like oh. that he was just like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like a one woman guy. And that honestly, I didn't have a problem with, and I actually was like appreciating how he was like, yeah, this is just kind of like me, take it or leave it. I was really liking that. Yeah. Oh, so you just didn't like him? That wasn't. Yeah, we just didn't. Al- I like him, but we just didn't align. We didn't align. He's a good guy, but we just didn't align on a, lo- uh, a couple other different things. <laughs> and um, I really, I'm very particular. Kayla knows I like to be treated a certain way, and I just felt like me this too. person wasn't cutting it. Yeah. So. You're like, open the door. Bye. But incredible guy, <laughs> and we're good friends. <laughs> Great. I should stop while I'm at too. You because, can just edit yeah. the whole thing. Out. Yeah. <laughs> edit the whole thing. No, out. we're good. Now, what about you, Brittany? Are you dating? What's happening? <laughs> Yes, I'm actually engaged. I, yeah, I don't have the ring on because I, I don't know. I always get scared Shit. I'm going to lose it because I always take it off to wash my hands. Yep. I take it off to do things. Then it gets itchy. You know, all that kind of it stuff. It gets but, itchy. All right. We yeah. need to double check where this ring is from. <laughs> yeah. Why is it itchy? Yeah. Why is it itchy? Whenever I wear... Check my fingers green. What is it? No. Like? Oh, no, no, no. no it's like... Whenever it's I wear like, any... Any rings at all doesn't matter what it is. It's just because I I, I fidget with my fingers a lot, and mm-hmm. so I'm always like doing this. And like I said, I was married when I was young, very young, and so I was trying to keep the ring on all the time, you know. And I would do this all the time, and I had sores all around Aww. from doing this. You're sensitive. I it You're just a I, sensitive baby. I don't know. I just don't like stuff on my hands. I think yeah. that's what it is. It's just like ah. But I, I try to wear it though. Whenever you know, I try to give back. I'm like, oh, I gotta put it back on and stuff, you know. But um. Congrats. But yeah, that's been the only hurdle so far. We have a great relationship besides, you know, having to, you know, wear the evidence. (laughs) If if that's the only hurdle, you have a charmed relationship, girl. Hell yeah. We are going to have to wrap this up in a little bit because CJ has an OnlyFans photo shoot, y'all. Yes. (laughs) Um, in, In just like about five minutes or so. But I wanted to get any last blurbs from the ladies i love how we've had two very strong personalities on her on here you guys have been Big fan. good guests so far yeah it's been really beautiful speaking of having great guests <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> uh on our patreon there is two tiers where you can have your questions featured on the show and so this question is coming from mike and he says you've had guests like um, Angela White and Danny Banks on your show. Would you ever want to maybe have a fan like me appear on your show? Which is a very we, we love that you want to come on we the show. Love, we love a confident man. Mike we said, do. "I d- put me on right after Danny Banks. Let me get in there. <laughs> Let me get in there. Put me in coach." Yes. And while we would love to meet a lot of our fans, uh, we only interview. Only you fans know, creators. Only fans yeah. content creators. And so if you, Mike, become a top OnlyFans content mm-hmm. creator with mm-hmm. whatever you're into. Or you write a book. Write a book. Or whatever you become it might a stroker. Be, stroker then, gal. Then at that point, reach out to us. Reach out. Um, maybe, We're not opposed. No. But until then. Until then. And maybe in the future we'll offer something like a guest experience. But yeah. right now we're keeping it to... The lovely ladies and gentlemen like we have had. That was actually such a good question. I want to continue to encourage these questions because that was a really, really good question. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very, I mean, you girls have heard of like fuck a fan contest or something. Mm -hmm. We really, we're definitely looking for ways to get the fans more involved. The best way to stay involved in the conversation is to comment. We get some crazy comments in there, y'all. Um, we we love our crazies. We love the crazy comments. Let's always try to keep it as constructive as possible possible don't be a um, dick yeah but right now like it's just yeah we're highlighting only fans creators this is a really special space for just only fans creators because um you know we don't really have that many spaces that are just dedicated to us y'all mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. perhaps and what the important part of this question was is that it gave us 
a very good idea. So thank you, Mike, for that. Yeah, keep it. Keep, yeah, keep pay attention because we're going to have something. Um, I do want you to look at your camera and show us this bad boy. Yeah. Yes, this is my stroker that came out with Cairo, and it's actually compatible with the key on. So if you have the virtual reality toy key on, it actually it connects to your computer Bluetooth and other sex toys and Hell stuff. Yeah. So yeah, you can use it remotely and everything. And yeah, you can take it out and connect it. And Alexis, she actually has her uh, stroker with the same company. Alexis, too. Texas? Uh, oh, Alexis, Alexis Fox. Fox. Okay, Alexis we're just talking Fox. About. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so she has hers with, um, with them also. But um, yeah, I would love to give this to one of you guys. What? So what is what what do they have to yeah, do though? No, let's let's have we're gonna you have to you have to be a Patreon mm -hmm. member, patron, mm -hmm. and we will figure out. So first things first, subscribe to the Patreon and when you go on there, we will be figuring out a way to either auction this off, yeah. do a giveaway to our OnlyFans. And how about if you're a Britney fan, you need to be subscribed to Britney's OnlyFans as yes. well. Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. of course. Yeah. Onlybritney.com. That's yeah. my OnlyFans, onlybritney.com. And my also my YouTube, BritneyAmber.tv as well. So yeah, stand out. <laughs> from the crowd do your best to impress us and mm -hmm. earn your stroke yes I'll, I will sign it for you guys too if you guys have a, sh a sharpie Sock around it. here I'll, I'll make sure to sign it and everything Hell so yeah. good luck you guys <laughs> all right and then tasha oh yeah i'm um down to give away my book i hope you enjoy it you can also buy it uh, on Audible and listen to it in the car when you're bored love that. i love audible love an audible mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And you're going to sign your book, too. I sure am. Going to be signed. But if y'all stroke with the book, don't just just read it first <laughs> and then use it as, as a stroker. Maybe read the book whilst you stroke with the with the with Britney's stroker. The Kygo. Yes. Yes. yes Cairo. The well, Cairo. Or, 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 Cairo. Uh, it's, <laughs> DJ well, it's, actually, it's called it. Feel Britney. But yeah, it's from the company Cairo. They do yeah. all kinds of really cool interactive toys. They have a, all okay. kinds of crazy cool toys. Read the I book their toys. or you can listen to it on Audible on, on Audible. Audible. Stroke your cock. Oh my god. Two things yes. at once. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hell yeah. Look at how cool my 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 pussy is actually beautiful every time i see it just look don't oh, you yeah. want to stick your dick in there that's so <laughs> love, baby. That's it is love. beautiful <laughs> it is though it, it really is. is sometimes you know i mean like i you know i i don't know what happens sometimes i think that maybe the mold gets messed up or something sometimes what? i see some of those i don't know sometimes they look scary but i don't i think <laughs> it's because the mold gets messed up or something i don't know it's the mold the I don't know. Not messed up, y'all. Why <laughs> out here pussy shaming? <laughs> no, because what I, I heard too is that some different. of them actually don't even mold them anymore. I think that's probably uh, part of it too. They'll just take a picture okay. and then try to like uh, do some kind of 3D thing after. So I don't this know. Is the real but mine deal. actually was actually molded from my pussy and that's actually a video that I have on my YouTube as well. It's actually got like 11 million views. Wow. Like, people love that video. I believe that. Yeah, Aww. so uh, I, there was this professional molder who came to my house because it was during the pandemic. So that was cool that she was yeah. able to come to me. And then she brought her assistant. They shot everything laid out, did everything. And she molded my ass too. So hopefully we get a, a butthole so, sometime oh, soon. That'd okay. be amazing. <laughs> butthole coming up. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, well, thank you both. This so awesome. I this learned was a good. lot. This was good. This I was cried a good a little. one. Yep. We laughed. We, we laughed. Cried. We cried. <laughs> we're, and we're done now. And All scene. right. Sounds and good. scene. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>